Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Black Spin Global podcast. I'm Eugene. And I'm Lucy. And yeah, guys, welcome to the latest episode. Lucy, how are you, how are you doing? Surviving, trying to push through. I'm not, I'm not feeling 100%, so my energy oh. might be a bit, you know, I'm actually drinking vitamin energy. But the difference, the last part, I was drinking a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> My times have changed. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, vitamin energy is actually a black owned business. Go on. It's called Feud or Food. They actually like created it because of like people have sickle cell because they don't have enough energy and oh, stuff. Oh, wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to them. This is not advertised right. anything. So this club. is legit. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I literally bought like huge cartons. So guys, check them out. They're really, really good. Yeah, and it actually gives me like not crazy energy, but just like a little, but yeah. Which is much black-owned. needed. Appreciate you for joining because obviously I know you're not feeling 100% as well. So, yeah, boy. <laughs> it's a big effort. Well, you know, definitely appreciate it. What about you? How are you feeling, Eugene? No, I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's been a nice week. It's a rare occasion that I've had a weekend off. So, I've just been chilling, which is nice. No. So, yeah, yeah. Because I don't really get many weekends off with this, this mm. new job. But it's all good. Like you said, we're pushing through. So, pushing yeah we're, we're we're all good so yeah let's let's get into it um mm-hmm. i mean where to start really a lot has happened actually i'm gonna say t- uh, maybe too much too much um, <laughs> which is which is a bit like crazy but you know, i guess that's just the way things are right now um in tennis both men's and women's tennis um but i, I think really the only place we, well the only place to start is on the women's side ash barty announcing her retirement um, at 25 years of age, three-time Grand Slam winner, reigning Australian Open and Wimbledon champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, yes, yeah, she announced the news. It was during Miami, um, which was obviously she wasn't playing in Miami. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it just basically caught everybody like by surprise. Like it was a, a big kind of like shock, I guess. Facts, yeah, um, what, 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 do, what do you remember? Like, or what do you what's your kind of take on on her like announcing her retirement um it's funny because you're the first person who said like because I woke up and I just saw the vacation I just saw your message and it was just like listen hey don't joke about you but Barty just retired I was like oh shit I did not you know like I did not see it coming but when I thought about it I was like you know what I respect it like she did what she had to do she won you know her slam she's making shit loads of money she made like history in her own hometown she's good fucking vibes you know like she to me is that you tick 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 is that all right cool and she just got engaged not too long ago i think her like her fiance proposed her like, a couple of months ago as well so it's like all right yeah. it is what it is i'm done now like i respect it because it's that like she could she could have been one of them people who forced it and then probably ended her career in a bad way it, like do you get what i mean like not being number one, not winning any slam, not winning any titles or anything. Like she finished in a high. But she um, went out on top. Like, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah. I can't like, I can't hate it. It would have been nice to watch her like play more. Just like, I feel like um, it was a little bit, we're starting to get a little different competition in WTA. So it would have been very cool if she stayed a little bit longer. But at the end of the day, like we said in our last pod, listen, if players want to do whatever they want to do, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, man, like she, she, she did her, I can't hate it. That's what I was like, you know what, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I respect it It is where it is. It would have been as a fan of tennis. I would have loved for her to stay longer. Um, but yeah, like shout out to Barty, man. She like, she just minds her own and just do whatever she wants to do. And I respect that. Like, I like the, the good thing about the, this generation of players, even though she's not really old gen or new gen to be fair. She's kind of in the middle, I would say. Mm. But what I like about the players today is that they're really much more in control of how they want to run their life and what they want to do, which is very different. And I think even us as tennis fans, we are not even realizing that difference. Um, it's like it's taking time for us to even take that in. But you know, it is what it is. Shout out to the OC. Um, all the best to her. I think she's even becoming like a children book author. Like she's already making moves like uh, offline, like doing her own thing. Um, but I'm looking forward to her explaining more like further why she's actually retiring. She did say she's gonna release that full interview because she only released like a snippet of that interview. Okay. So I would like to hear more as to why she's really making that decision, especially at 25. But at the same time, you know, it is where it is, man. Can't judge it. I think you make a good point as well, like just about from a, a fan's perspective, like 
basically not being able to see like the rivalry or potential rivalry exactly. like Pro, like it was looking like there was going to be one between her and like Osaka for instance or mm. Tech, um I say Megadutha as well like you know those other girls at the top but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I mean like you said fair play to her like she's in control of like her own life and yeah she's literally made this made the decision to to stop because yeah she feels like that's kind of that's really that's it now it. for her like in, in tennis and like yeah who's to say she she might come back like a few years a few years from now like which is what she's done before this is not her exactly, first time exactly so I think like you said she probably just wants to like go and like spend some time with her family her new partner or her husband um, maybe start a family as well mm-hmm. so yeah like you said good luck and mm-hmm. she, she's nothing but good vibes so we wish her we wish her all the best right. um another piece of retirement news although it's not exactly happened yet but it, it's coming um <laughs> joe wolford songer uh the the frenchman 36 years old he announced that this year's french open will be his last event and he's going to call it call it quits um this will be his 15th appearance at Roland Garros which is just mad yeah um I think he reached the semi-finals I can't remember the year um but yeah he got to 2008 yeah I think it was like around 2008-9 because that was like when he was really really, well at the top his career high was yeah it was like five um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That was in 2012. That, the, them, them years there, he was on it. Yeah, so because I remember when when that news broke or when he announced it on, I think it was YouTube. He put out like a, a video with his wife and I think a, a French journalist or I, I don't know who. That oh, was. I saw it. But, I saw it on Instagram. Yeah, but I'm saying the video was like a, a video announcement. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, he he put that on YouTube. Um, but yeah, when when I remember when when I saw it, I was like, wow, like. It kind of had me my feelings for a bit because I was like, I really took him for granted in terms of like just how talented mm. like mm. He, he is or was in, you know, in his prime, although he was really unlucky with like a lot of injuries, which is kind of what he explained as well, like in terms yeah. of he, he, was, just he basically just said that he was just tired of like, he was like, what's the fucking point? Like, what am I, what am I doing yeah. this to myself? But um, now you're right about the whole taking advantage thing. I was looking at some of like, some snippets which I posted on the BSG uh, <laughs> IG story. And I was like, bro, this guy's wrist is fucking insane. Like, like when I was watching it, I was like, bro, I really took this guy for like, this I felt the same. I was yeah. like, damn, like Songo was actually that fucking guy. I think like, he won 18, 18 titles um, in, in, in total. Like I think three of them were Masters events. So Masters 1000s. Um, he, he's beaten Federer, Nadal and Djokovic like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a number of times. Mm-hmm. Um, like, not many players like have kind of like his record. Yeah. Like, and I think and I think because of before. those recent injuries, a lot of people kind of forgot like who the fuck he is. Yeah. Which kind of, which always happens in sports anyways. Like a, a player gets injured and we literally forget, even if it's like recent, like I literally forget team is a US Open champion. Where has he <laughs> yeah. been? Because it's been injured. You get what I mean? It's it's yeah, those no, type 100%. of thing. And our sport. There's too much going on every day. You kind of forget what's even going on. And then boom, one player comes. Oh yeah, I'm retiring. Like, you know, when when Del Potro like literally retired as well, I was sad as hell. And I was like, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't, I haven't really even been watching his matches. And now I'm like, shit, why, have, why did I not do that? <laughs> now he's gone. He's living his best, you know, like influencer life. This guy is busy going to every event. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know what? I respect it. Still get that money. But no, yeah, man. So no, we really look forward to watching Songa. Um, obviously, he's playing Monte Carlo, um, mm-hmm. and then yeah, he'll play the well. He'll probably play Madrid as well, um, and then obviously the French will be his his last hurrah. Um, it'd be so good if he can get to like the second week. Like I, I'm not gonna obviously the fairy tale be to win it, but. Um, let's be realistic. Players, Listen, be players, players are so ruthless when someone's retiring. I'm like, raw, like, can't you just allow it? <laughs> yeah. Like, when you can't, blame, um, you can't blame them though, man. It's not a no, chance. it's true, right. but still, it's like, come on, man, be a little bit nice. <laughs> like, when that Spanish player that retired, I just kind of caught. Oh, as far as Navarro, yeah. Yes. Yeah. When she was, fam, every first round, everyone was beating her ass. I and think I'm it was, like, it damn. Was, she just was... like she just recovered from cancer. Like allow it a little bit. She's about to retire. Like bro, you're didn't... gonna play like next week. Like stop it. Like come didn't on. Sloan beat her at Roland Garros? I think that was yeah, her yeah, last yeah. match. Yeah. 
Yeah, Sloan did. Sloan yeah, did. Yeah. Okay. Except Sloan. Except the black players. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <gonna> saying. <laughs> but there was I'm a nice, I like the embrace that. actually, Sloan. There was a nice embrace. Like Yeah, I feel like out of everyone, she definitely did. I do I I felt like anyways the WTA didn't do a good job to do like a, a farewell to yeah. her. Even though like a lot of the players are, who retired recently. So I really hope that when he does his last match, especially at a French Open, oh, him massive. being a French guy, I really hope that people go crazy. Already the French crowd is 10 out of 10. I personally really <laughs> like their rowdiness and their craziness. I like that energy. So I really hope that they bring that on his first match, second match, or whatever match, all the matches that he's on, the moment that he's there, just like a nice farewell. It's going to make me emotional. I know. Oh, really. yeah, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people will be, to be fair. It'd be nice as well if he gets to play on, like, Philippe Chatrier as in the main court. Um, Obviously, the draw has not been made yet, but I think mm. that would be a nice send-off for him. Like, and he he deserves that, even though, yeah, he's, he hasn't won a Grand Slam, but yeah, yeah, yeah. he's arguably been, like, not even arguably, he, I think he's been the most successful, like, male tennis player, male French tennis player since Yannick Noah. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, when you, when you, like, look at that and some of the guys, like, Guillaume Monfils, Richard Gasquet, like... I mean, we just saw Felix just praising him when they just played against each other. And I'm so proud that Felix actually got the, plus, that, the chance to actually play against him and stuff yeah, so that'd be yeah. really cool. earlier this year exactly mm. so you know good luck good luck to Joe Wilford and we do look forward to seeing him at Roland Garros um <laughs> now on to Serena Williams <laughs> I mean where where to start with this Lucy like should we, should we go Patrick first because I think yeah let's let's go chronologically so right, it was cool. Patrick Murtoglu announced the like shocking news like and yeah. I'm not saying shocking as in like disappointing just shocking as in it was a shock um shocking news that he is now working with Simona Hallett um on a short-term basis which I, I think is a key key term in in that post that he or statement that he, he released on his Instagram or socials um and yeah that led everybody to believe wow like Serena's retiring that's it she's finished like <laughs> obviously Twitter was like an absolute mess like immediately Mate. after. Mate, um, like, everyone <laughs> yeah. was just, what was I even doing? I think I was just working. I just put on my phone and I just saw someone to say, yeah, this might be Serena retired. And I was like, whoa. And I started yeah, saying, like, I, I love the tweet you said about, oh, Eugene needs to wake up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm that's the thing. Because I messaged you, I was like, Eugene, Eugene Allen. I feel like that's the first time I said your full name as well. I was like, Eugene Allen, wake up. What the fuck does short term mean? What does that mean? That's all I want to know. Patrick, what Patrick and Serena and everyone else involved, what the fuck does short term mean? Matter of fact, that's going to be the name of this episode. <laughs> what does short term mean? <laughs> like, honestly, what does it mean? But that was well because obviously that was on a Thursday. I want to say like Thursday afternoon slash Thursday yeah. afternoon, and then later on that day, Serena was at a Bitcoin like conference or t- some kind of talk. Um, the Bitcoin yeah, some Bitcoin app. thing. Yeah, yeah, Bitcoin yeah. cash app. That's it. Yeah. And she was there with Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham. Um, she was backstage. She like was with Erin Rogers, she records like a video to her IG story where she she basically everyone's seen it now. Oh, we've just been talking about my comeback at Wimbledon get, or getting ready for Wimbledon, um, and that that was like oh wow like so she's she's coming back this year at Wimbledon like we're gonna see Serena again at Wimbledon, um, <laughs> yes. and obviously the she knew what she was like, doing exactly it all it all kind of like yeah linked. I well for me anyway. You cannot trick me. Cannot trick me. It linked back to Patrick. Um, so I mean, yeah. What was your what were your immediate thoughts like after seeing Serena release that video? Listen, I'm not. I'm so sorry. I love my queen, but I'm not believing anything to Wimbledon start because the thing is, Serena knows. She knows her stands. She knows our fans. Like we're all crazy. She definitely saw the tweets that everyone like going crazy so she needed to release or say something for people to come down so I was expecting her to say something um I thought it would be more of a statement to be honest like like a more like a hi guys yeah Patrick da, da, da. so the way that she did it was was different from what I expected so which I, I don't know how I don't know but 
But that means because she did say initially she's gonna come back for French Open, right? Didn't she? I don't know. That's the thing. I, 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 I think I'm, she did. I'm not saying I don't think she. But will. to be honest, I don't mind her skipping French Open personally. That's me. Yeah. The only issue with Wimbledon though is that you don't, you know, you know how grass season is. It's basically two hours. Like there's right. literally like barely any right, matches sure. and stuff. So, in my ideal world, I'd love to her to play some of the smaller tournaments. You know, um, naturally like the one in Nottingham and all, all them lots and whatnot before Wimbledon and then I mean, get she, it started. She, she'll definitely play a warm-up event somewhere. She has to, because she's, she's not playing. But she barely does for grass season. But she, Lucy, she's not played a tournament all year. I know, I know, <laughs> but I'm just, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I agree yeah. with you. I definitely feel like she should. But we're talking about Serena Williams right here. Do you get what I mean? Like, she doesn't play as many matches. Like, Venus has more chances of her playing there than literally Serena. So, I don't know, but... I just, it, it's still, I still want to know what the fuck short term means. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Peter Patrick. Number, two, number two, what do you think of Patrick? I want to get your finger on this, but what do you think of Patrick working with Halep? Because I personally thought he will work with a younger uh, player because he's always with the young people. He's always like, yeah. you literally see Patrick all the time with like the young stars and stuff. So I was extremely surprised. And to be fair, I kind of felt like he went for an op. Because Halep took a Wimbledon title away from <laughs> my soul. For me, for me. Anyways, I'm so sorry, Halep. Like, I like you and all that, but I'm never forgiving you for 2019. So just deal with that. Like, from me, anyway. Not from Blasphemy Club, but from me, Lucy Kadisha Tizangi. I have a hard time um, forgiving you for that. So, Patrick, you're kind of like, I'm, I, I see you, but I don't see you. Like, I see oh, you, wow. but I don't see you. But what do you think, like... I would like, yeah. Well, what did you think of him? Yeah, it's, 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 it, listen, it's weird. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, it's not because, it, it, like you said, Halep is a rival. Like, it's it's a bit crazy. But mm. at the same time, like, Patrick has a job. Like, he needs to work. Like, obviously, he's got his academies like all over. He's got one in, in Nice and I think Dubai now, and I think even in America. I think, but mm. the guy needs to work. He's literally been out. Money if you make facts, like you said, like you said on the IG story, like. So you can't really begrudge him, like, for oh, that. Oh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I do hear you, like, because obviously he does kind of do a lot of work with a lot of, like, the up-and-coming juniors um, or, like, yeah, prospects. So mm. it, it did kind of, it was a surprise, the, the fact that he has gone with, like, like you said, like an established, like, champion, because that is what mm -hmm. Hannah is. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But then at the same time, like, can you blame her for, like, asking, asking him to coach her? Like... It's that's a, true because she's basically a, well by reading the thing she's the one who basically exactly to him. approached him and then he, he has you know what shout out to her for sharing a shot because i'm pretty <laughs> sure it. there's some players who read that statement thinking wait so what he was available this is now it. it makes me think how many players have actually reached out to patrick and and he said he had to speak to serena first which which like again that's giving serena like serena basically gave that situation the green light so mm -mm -mm. it's like as much as she's not playing like she still holds a lot of power or like weight in oh yeah that whole situation um but i i i just hope yeah i i can't see her playing the french open because I, I just think time isn't that there's just not enough time and she's not yeah, yeah, yeah. no she's, she's not playing like, i think if she would she would have said something by now exactly. but she's definitely so not I th playing i think french wimbledon open. like you said even wimbledon for me that's not a given like yeah, she said, oh, she's preparing or, like, getting hyped for Wimbledon. That's what I'm saying, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. I think that's I'm the like... first time Serena said, yeah, I'm going to a tournament. Like, everyone on Twitter was just like, yeah. Yeah. Like, ev so... like, everyone, like, everyone was not, like, I didn't see the normal hype that I would normally see. I think, I, but I think most people were just, I think when people saw that statement, they just automatically jumped into, like, yeah, Serena's gone. Because I, I was just like, because I, I was freaking out. I was like what are you trying to tell us here Serena mm. like are you are you leaving are you done like are you are you finishing you know what? <laughs> yeah like what, what, the, what is going on and then she probably she took that she even did two posts she did that IG story and then she did a TikTok video it was like a meme like she was running like even in heels and she was like me running to getting ready for Wimbledon or me running to Wimbledon oh, or something really? like okay. that and I was just like boy like whatever man was that on like, the same day the TikTok thing or was that later on? I think even like a day after or the same day, okay. something like that. Maybe, listen, so, maybe maybe she does actually plan to come back then. No, I think no, no, no. I think yeah. she does plan to go, but I just want to know what her plan is because if you're just getting up 
since whatnot to go and play Wimbledon, my heart's going to be shattered because I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry. There's no way you already have to deal with the pressure of these players playing their best tennis against you till this day. And they've been playing since God knows when. Do you get what I mean? Like some of these players have been active like crazy. They've been playing like, it's like they had no break. Everyone's just been playing like crazy. So whereas you have her, understandably, you know, a mom, business woman and injury as well. I think we forget that most important bit. I get it. But as a, as a fan, I'm just like, please just, just do the right stuff and just, you know, and just come. But I definitely get with Patrick. And with Patrick, like, I don't think it's even just the money, to be honest, because Patrick's been loaded all his life. Oh, it's, not, like, it's definitely not the money. Definitely. It's not. just like, I mean, like, Jameer told us in the interview, like, this guy literally Rinse and breathe loves, tennis. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. loves tennis. So definitely get it. But there's one tweet I definitely do want to read because, like, which goes back to the whole, like, him working with Halep and stuff. But uh, someone called, oh, uh, well, his at is Make It Wayne 15. Shout out to him. Um, he said, I don't, because I said, I'm actually surprised that he didn't go over the younger players. And he basically explained that I don't think he's great. He's a great building coach. Like all the young players he has, he has had glaring holes in their games. Steph with the backhand, Coco with the forehand and so on. I think he's probably a great finisher and is good for helping already solid players elevate. Could be wrong. Which is actually a good point. Good point, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Because he started working with Serena when she had like what? Already like. 12 slams or yeah. or I, mean, I, think I, think like, I think 10. 10. Yeah, I think she had like yeah, 10 slams already. And you know, look, so which which could be true, but at least at least he's already keeping an eye on those things. And Patrick's not the only person. Jill has been, you know, she's been around with oh, some she, of she, the she's been out here, yeah. So Getting that's on. the thing. So it's like that's why that's another reason why I'm freaking out as well. It's like it's not even just her coach, like. I never, we barely used to see Jill with any other player. Do you get what I mean? Or maybe she was working with other players, but she kept it low-key. But I'm out here watching a Robin match and she's in her box. Apparently she was part of the people that helped um, Tia forget that IMG yeah. deal. So I'm just like, well, at least she's with the black players. So shout out to Jill. <laughs> shout out to Jill. You know what I mean? Help us get them deals and get my right. black players paid. But um. Yeah, no, listen, it, it's going to be fascinating. It's scary. I, it's, it's scary. Yeah. I am not ready to let that woman go. A, a lot <laughs> now and Wimbledon, and like I think all we can do is just basically just pray and hope. And, 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 <laughs> and that's pray. As, as fans, but I mean, obviously, I so don't our know. Muslim fans, you know, your Ramadan is, is you know, <laughs> just please put that, put that, put Serena in your in your prayer just a little bit. Um, and I, I think quickly we should we should also mention Venus as well because she I think she was on her IG like doing like a Q and A with with like fans. Um, mm -hmm. I think no, it wasn't her IG. I think it was her brand. The, the mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she does it quite like basically a weekly basis. Yeah, and and someone asked her like, oh, are we are we going to see at Wimbledon this year? Um, and she was like, oh, you know, I never like to miss Wimbledon. So again, people took that to say she's also preparing to come back at Wimbledon this year too. So obviously, it'd be great to see both of them. Like. Um, and I hope I hope we do basically. So 100. I think I think she, I feel like her and Serena just kind of have the same schedule. Yeah, yeah. It's very as of, uh, yeah, as of yeah. especially as of recently, like at least back in the days before, like there's times where you see Venus play, you yeah, might not see Serena yeah. vice versa. But I feel like the last at least three years, three four years, I will say, I feel like the schedule has been extremely like yeah. similar. It's been very rare seeing one of them in one tournament and the other one. In not um yeah. so yeah but i won't be surprised if venus was will still go i generally think she has not been playing because her sister's not been playing personally <laughs> and she's been busy with the king richard stuff and i, I feel like say, well, which we're gonna get on to now um yeah so oh, nice, yeah nice, nice segue um so yeah king richard obviously i, I don't want to say swept up at the oscars because they it didn't but was <laughs> one the, the best actor well uh, deserved song and exactly rightly so um <laughs> i said i said i'm not gonna i don't want to talk about the slap because I, I just don't think <laughs> it's been done enough like no i, I, mean, I definitely feel you i mean I, unless you want to say anything about it like um no i definitely feel you because it's been like the same conversation since all i'm gonna say is i'm not surprised with well, how although, although to be fair what has kind of broke since um all of that or the fallout 
after that anyway, is Will Smith being banned from the Oscars for 10 years, which is, I just find ridiculous, but... Yeah, again. but it's but it's funny. He's being banned to not attend the event. So he can still be nominated and stuff. Is it, is it, but, but then essentially, surely, surely that means like he's basically been blackballed in Hollywood. Like... Oh yeah, he's, he's, he 100% is, but like, this goes back to what I was saying, like all of this outcome is not mm. surprising me. Like, listen niggas we never will have the same rules the same outcomes at these white people these white people can smoke crack on live television they can <laughs> c- commit the craziest crimes i mean look at these hollywood actors they doing the craziest thing i don't want to say in words in terms of trigger warnings but we're never going to be the same as them like mm-hmm. it is what it is so sometimes when you do something double think it because the outcome for a white guy and a black person and a black man especially when it comes to those type of things ain't the same but he won his oscars he had a great career you know like will smith is an accomplished person in 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 hollywood so at least we've been able to give him his flowers is unfortunate that this has to be like overshadowed with the fact that he finally won his Oscar for a movie that he played so well in. Um, that's a bit that really frustrates me as yeah, well. Same. Exactly. Like the, we haven't had a black man winning an Oscar in such a long time, and this has happened. But it, it, for me, the, the biggest thing, more than any, anything, like you said, it takes away from how good the film was. Like or that's the thing as well. Yeah, because you know a lot of people might go back and watch it and stuff but now i'm wondering has people actually gone back to watch it or not but if you haven't well i shouldn't be saying that on black spin global there's no way you're a black spin global fan yeah, of course you've seen it, it. <laughs> so, although, yeah. although, i was watching um the breakfast club a few weeks mm-hmm. ago mm-hmm. and on Janu ellis who plays oracine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm gonna was watch an interview yeah really good you should definitely watch it but she's she's not watched she's not watched the film she said she's ha- really? she hasn't watched the film yet, but she, she's basically she's ba- she's scared to watch it. She said because like she doesn't want to like critique herself. Like she's her biggest critic. She said and mm. she was like she doesn't want to like see any kind of like faults or yeah. And I, I found that fascinating because she that was is, amazing. That is very interesting. She was, what I was about to say. She was she was and she was even nominated was for best supporting mm-hmm. actress. So she was she was yeah. That, that's that I've just found that quite amazing or incredible. Um, oh, wow, that so, that is interesting. And but I think before we move on as well, I think it's important to mention Beyonce and her opening the whole show. First of all, (laughs) Eugene, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You're growing into a beehive. I'm so proud that you're the first one to actually mention Beyonce before me. Well done. I've watched that performance that probably like 10 times. I'm not even joking. Uh, Like it already has like what eight million views or something like that, or six point eight, something like that. But it, it was such a beautiful performance oh, yeah. beautiful like the, oh the sounds the image like it just everything like it's just I just find it crazy how she just keeps on evolving like I'm just like I don't get it. it's not fair it's not fair but <laughs> I'm sad I knew Betty Ellis was going to win that award like it was the moment I saw her and I saw what movie was for the James Bond I was like yeah but that was a bit surprised. That was, that surprised me. I'm not gonna lie. I, I did think Beyonce. No. I did think they were Oh gonna... no 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 no! Because it's not the first time Beyonce has literally like the Oscars are just you know that's why it sounded me wish she didn't perform because it's like you need her. Do you mm. get what I mean? Like you guys need her. Like and it was the stats. Literally, we saw stats where at the beginning there was crazy views, and then it, as soon as she finished performing, <laughs> went back down. <laughs> then it went back a little bit up after um the whole Will Smith thing. Okay. So if that Will Smith didn't even happen, literally just keep on going down. That's how much power she holds. So shout out to her. And that's what I love about the song. It was for us, by us, even the performance was full on black people. Like, in I Compton. just love, like, yeah, yeah in well. fucking Compton. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love, I really appreciate the fact that she reached out to them and said, let me do this for you guys. Uh, we could have had anyone else, but I'm just really, really glad that, you know, she kept it. For us niggas, that's it. <laughs> for us, by us, nigga. So shout out to Beyonce, the greatest of all time, for uh, a movie that where we are celebrating the greatest of all times as well. Shout out 100%. to Miss Richard. Shout out to everyone, man, on that movie. That's 100% one of the best movies I've watched. Like, Will Smith did a great job. Everyone did a great job. Um, but yeah. No, definitely well said. Legendary all around. Um, 
I think, yeah, now we should move on to Miami and just like basically reviewing what went down there. Um, mm. So good to see Naomi Osaka uh, reach the final. But I think before we before we get into Osaka, let's just start off in the earlier round. So Heather Watson, I think she deserves a shout out beating Alina Svitolina mm-hmm. um, en route to the third round. Um, and that was her first top 20 win um, in two years uh, for Watson. So... And she's not had the best like kind of year slash maybe 18 months to be fair. Yeah. So that, that was a nice moment for her. She reached the third round. In the end, mm-hmm. she lost to the I think yeah, Belinda Bencic um, in, in the third round. Um also want to shout out Coco Goff as well, because she reached the round of 16. Um she fell to the eventual champion, Iga Schwantek, who we'll talk about a bit later on as well. Um, but I just thought again, just really good to see Coco. Like she was seeded. I think she was seeded 18, no, she was seeded anyway. Um, and this is a WTA 1000 and she's 18 mm-hmm. years old. Like just the continued elevation of her game is just incredible to see. Um, and yeah, she also reached the double semi-final with Katy McNally um, and they lost out to the top seeds, uh, Veronica Kudamitova and Elise Mertens. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Asaka, so good. Like <laughs> I think everyone kind of, she was on everyone's like baby basically list to win the thing like after her first two two matches i want to say just because like the level was pr- mm. pretty much like back mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say um but yeah what did you make of her her kind of route to the final i was super excited i just wish people kept the same i just wish people kept the same energy um there was a lot of talking did indian wells about yeah da 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 now that she actually like you guys asked her to be a fan and you know to enjoy the sport she does and she wins and you guys are not making that much noise you are making hella noise in our comments in our mentions and everywhere <laughs> around the world I'm talking about she should ret- nah 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 let's keep it let's keep it to Virgil's chat like like honestly like they were here fighting this woman saying that she does not love tennis. She can't do this. She can't do that. Literally right the tournament right after that, she shut everyone up, which I love. Cause she mm-hmm. could have been like me. Cause if I was her, I said it before, I'll be bad vibes and cuss everyone out, but she didn't. <laughs> she came and she literally played one of her best matches and she killed it. She made it all the way to the finals. Um, her beating Benchik, let me tell you. That, for me, that was the highlight. That was the highlight of the let whole. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And not that day, yeah. Okay, go on, go on. That day, top five moments of the year for me. Because honestly speaking, I don't want to, you know what? I'm going to keep it positive. But honestly, that match, I felt like even like Benchik, she was really trying to like push her i actually even thought she won, she won the first she, set yeah yeah i thought when that happened i was like nah you can't do this to me again naomi like wake the fuck up but she she pushed through she honestly pushed through even the handshake at the end she was good vibes again for his meal i probably slapped her but you know because you can't do all that talking and mm-hmm. you know she was chatting there was, i think she chatted here about naomi for like two three times and we had to let it go i had to let it go but Naomi knew she couldn't do that to me and all of her fans again. Like that woman just had to lose, honestly. So, um, was, like, so good to see. So, so yeah, good. I feel like it was a very challenging match before E before the final, which was good. And I felt like that's why I felt confident about her winning the whole thing. Like before yeah. that, I was like, yeah, she could win it and stuff, da da da. But after she beat like Benchik, I was like, okay, yeah, this yeah, is it I because agree. I agree. Because, you know, Belinda as well, she's been kind of. On it, I feel like her winning that Olympic gold thing was kind of gave her a boost because I feel like since then oh, she's kind of been on job, to be yeah. honest, as much as I don't really like her. But I will be, you know, a good critic and be honest that, you know, she's definitely stepped up her game. So I was definitely nervous for Osaka at the semi finals, but I'm really glad that, you know, she put through to the finals. And like to me, her making the final was more than enough. Like, I would love her to win, but for her to make it to the finals was just was just everything. She was in good vibes. Like, oh, I just love her. I just wanted to, like, hug her. Like, honestly, she's just great. What, what did you make of the final against Iga Swansea? As in now, <laughs> we should say as well, the, the new world number one, and, and clearly rightly so. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not going to lie. 
he was playing like a fucking beast, mate. Like she did not let like nah, I, I can't even hate. Like, I was just like, you know what? I put my hands up. Like mm-hmm. she she's on she was on job. She was really, yeah. really on job. She played really well. She was extremely focused. Um, she gave she gave her 10 out of 10. Like she like I, we have to be honest, she definitely played much better than Osaka. I think Osaka was probably a bit nervous as well, but I don't even want to downplay that because I don't want it to make it seem like I'm finding excuses because oh, either cool. really did play a very good match. Like she was on what she had a solution for any, like anything that I was sucker for, threw at her. She knew what to do next. Like yeah. every single thing. Um, but it's very, I had no idea like during um, the match, like they were saying how Iga has like some personal coach, some mind coach or something. Yeah. 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 Like she's been had that. I think she had that at the, French or after the French Open that she won. Do you know what? That is that is such a fantastic thing. When I heard that, I was like, I rate that a lot. And the fact that she, I didn't even know it was, because I, I couldn't tell when she had that, because I had no idea. But her having that right after the French Open is probably one of the best ideas that she probably ever did. Mm. Um, Because it is a lot. How yeah. many players after they win that first slam is like, especially from the new gen, like, let's be honest, compared to the old gen. Like, I don't know if the pressure is different or I don't know what it is but hearing that I, you know I think we kind of forget how much your mental strength goes into anything that you do in life but in tennis it's different because you're alone when you're on that court mm-hmm. so I feel like your mental strength had to be like even on a thousand so for her to have that that's that's incredible so shout yeah. out to Iga they gave us a good match but you know she she killed it and I'm looking forward to the rival between them two because oh, Osaka massive. definitely Osaka definitely looked at her like I let you for this one. <laughs> that next I'm that coming. next match, that next I'm match, yeah. It's not gonna be nice. It's not gonna be nice. I can I could feel it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to their to like to them playing against each other. I completely agree. I think everything you said is spot on. Like I, I like you, I thought after the after the Benchich match, I was like, yeah, Saka's gonna win this whole thing. Like mm-hmm. it's gonna be a nice, maybe a, a, a Maybe a, a free setter against Shiontek, but I think for me, like the the lack of big match practice that Osaka, yeah. lack of big ma- the lack of big matches that Osaka hasn't played, um, basically played a part in the, in that final. So mm. pressure, like you said, is different in a final as opposed to like earlier rounds. Mm. Um, and also, yeah, she's playing the world number one, like. They're, they're friends too. Like there's a lot kind of mm-hmm, going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I think that was the first, her first even big um, top 10 or top 20 match in like a very long time as well. For Osaka. For Osaka, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It probably probably would, would have been, yeah, exactly. I remember that's so, what they were saying as well, yeah. So like all of that, when you factor all of that in, like it kind of does make sense to, I, I, I don't want to say low, but like the drop off in level, like just because mm. of the pressure of the whole situation Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But again, like you said, I think now that's over, and like she's spoken after or since anyway. She's she's hungry for more now. Like she she's Thanks. eager to kind of get back to kind of where she belongs, and that is the yeah. top. Um, and she even said, I think it was after the after the final, <laughs> or during the starts of my car. Like so, where where do you plan to like go in terms of like what level do you want to reach? Um, now that you've kind of been, you played Miami, you've reached the final. And she's like, oh, I want, I want to get back to the top. And so she was like, oh, number one. And then she's like, oh, hang on a minute. That's way too much pressure. And then she kind of like paused for a bit. She goes, oh, you know what? Yeah, I want to go, I want to get back to number one. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> Jesus class. Um, and she she can do it. Like She, she can, 100%. We, we all know like the game she has. Um, and just to clarify as well, because the last episode I said, oh, like she's literally the best. She, I still think she's the best mm-hmm. at it. Uh, woman tennis player but I do want to differentiate like we do know she needs she needs to work on her grass court game and her clay court game but on the hard courts like for me even after after Miami and her losing to Schwantek I still believe Osaka is a better tennis player like mm, that's just mm. my opinion yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah I, I just think it's just good to see her back and like she's happy mm-hmm. exactly. she's, playing, she's playing Stuttgart which I'm looking forward to seeing her on the clay she's done relatively well in Stuttgart I think she reached the quarterfinals the last time she, she played Stuttgart so it's just going to be good to see her like back on the tour basically yeah um, yeah I was just glad that she she got back so quickly and so early 
because exactly. of after, after Indian Wells, exactly. Bro, and the way yeah. everyone was just chatting, so that's why I'm like, you know what? All of you that spend hours chatting shit about her should go back to spending hours celebrating the fact that <laughs> she won. I don't give a fuck. Like honestly speaking, like, it was just ridiculous. So shout out to her for actually not spending too much time on dwelling on what happened in Indian Wells and was just exactly. trying. Even when people kept asking her about it, she always answered to like the positive. But I think she expected it. Yeah. And I feel like from the chaos that happened last year, I think she kind of learned from like, you know, what to do and what to say. I mean, she even shared that now she even sees a therapist, which I actually thought she was doing before. Yeah. After French Open, I assumed, I made the assumption that she would do that. But uh, maybe she did. She didn't want to share. Maybe now she's sharing the fact that, okay, yeah, I've, I'm seeing a therapist and she's been helping me with this, this and that. So shout out to that. I'm, I've always been pro therapy if you can afford it because we all know it's not it's not something that's free or cheap. Mm. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy for her. Looking forward to clay season. I just like watching her play because the more she plays, the more she's it's easier it will be for her to get to that top exactly. that she wants to reach. So... Um, I just hope she's playing a lot more than before. I think right now she's kind of in a vacation-ish. But um, we're soon going to be seeing her, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Um, just before we move on, I think the men, we should give them a quick uh, shout-out. So Felix, he I think he yeah, he lost in the second round. He got a bye um, and lost to van der Schoenschup, the, the Dutch guy. Yeah. And that was a three-set match. Um, very frustrating to watch that one, actually. But... Yeah, Felix is now obviously playing on the clay, um, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, Girl Monfils, he reached the third round, so he lost in straight sets to Francesco Chondolo. Um, I liked his tweet after that match. He was like, oh, like, yeah, I played really bad and like really just sorry to the fans basically for my performance. But he was like, again, um, but also like credit to my opponent for kicking my ass. <laughs> he actually said that in English, which I thought was quite funny. Mm. Um, and like, yeah, Francis Tierfo, seeded 28th. Um, he reached the round of 16. Um, played a really good match against Brandon Nakashima um, in the second round, that was a free setter. Mm. Nakashima always plays well against Tierfo, but yeah, mm. it's a really nice match between them. Um, and yeah, Francis came through that. And then he beat Chirindulo, one man yell, sorry, Chandula, the younger brother of Francesco, Francesco, um, in the third round, and then yeah, lost to Francesco in the round of sixteen, um, and yeah, that was the end of Francis in Miami. And I also want to shout out the Miami Open champion on the men's side, Carlos Alcaraz, um, eighteen years old now, mm -hmm. <laughs> now top ten, like. The guy is just he's a joke, basically. Yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he, he played now. Nah, he's 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 dope. Yeah. Good vibes as well. Like, I, I feel like say, he's definitely yeah. going to be like one of the definitely faces of you know the next gen. Everyone's been putting line. the same players, but I feel that like Alcaraz is like going yeah. up. Um really, really looking forward to him playing just a very, very likable as well, which I think is he is. And I think that's more. why he has, yeah, he has a lot of support yeah. and everything. Um and he just seems just focused, like he's good vibes, focused, and he actually plays really fucking well as well. Yeah. Like he's a great player. Did you see like the the clips of um because Juan Carlos Ferrero? I've actually got a picture of Juan Carlos Ferrero back in my uh, younger days. Just a, a quick, <laughs> quick shout out, but um yeah, um, <laughs> I guess there was a nice clip of Juan Carlos because he wasn't at the tournament in Miami until the yeah. final because his his dad passed. But he he made sure he he made made the trip for the final, obviously. Oh, so that's why everyone was making. I was like, why is everyone making it such a big deal? Like I didn't yeah. really put the tune because I think I was getting ready as I was watching the match. I was going okay. out, so I was watching the match as I was getting ready, and um, it's really emotional. Yeah, everyone school. was just yeah, yeah. Like I was just yeah. like, what's going on here? I was like, okay, maybe I'll figure out later on. <laughs> but no, I, I think like you said, Alcaraz is going to be a player that we're going to see a lot of, and that is Facts. definitely like future like top five I don't want to say world number one because I think that's just like the crazy. pressure but yeah he's going to be in the top 10 for a long time mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so nice. we look forward to seeing him play a lot more um just other bits before we move on so wild cards Robin Montgomery um, and Hayley Baptiste they both went the distance um in their first round matches um we did say that Toglu was sitting in Montgomery's camp for her match, which was quite interesting to see. 
Um, so yeah, both of them playing pretty good tennis. I want to say it, it's mm-hmm. only going to be a matter of time until they they kind of like for Baptiste anyway, because she's twenty and like she's basically been playing more at this level. But I think it's only a matter of time until yeah she goes on a run at like one of these like WTA two fifties or five hundreds yeah. yeah. to really like get that ranking up in the top one hundred, which is where it belongs. Um, and yeah, before we move on, shout out to Paul Job. So he won his first challenger event um, in Bolivia, Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Um, he beat the world number 119, Juan Pablo Vebalas, 6 6376 in the final. Um, and yeah, he was 1-4 down in the second set. So to come back and <laughs> basically, yeah, take the second set and take the match ultimately in, in his first challenger tour final. Pretty good look for Paul Job. So yeah, yeah. shouts out to him. Um, and yeah, before we... Yeah, before you kind of finish up, just a round up of Charleston. Did you watch much of Charleston this week? Um, a little bit. Not as much. I watched, um, oh shoot, who was playing against that French woman, Cornez or Cornet, whatever her name is again. Is it not Parks? Oh, of course it was Parks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Parks. Yeah. yeah it was Parks. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Parks' match, I did watch it. Um, ah, oh, that one was like, it was a good match. It was. Unfortunate, but it was a good match. It was very close on the second set. Yeah, it was was seven like, five. She lost in the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Like she was very close. Like she was, she just needed to close her game, and that was it. When she was on like the fifth thing, but um, that was a good one as well. Um, very pretty girl, by the way, as well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I watched. I watched a few. Um, not all, but a few. Yeah. Because it was. It, I mean. It was... Slightly disappointing, like from a Black Spring Global perspective. Like, so lost in the second. This whole week, this whole week, this whole week was like, bro, like, you know, like, damn. Although although TFO kind of saved it in Houston, which we'll come on to a bit later. Yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. But yeah, Charleston, just just quickly, like you said, so we had Parks, um, Robinson, and Vickery. Like, we don't really see them often, like, at this level so it was good to see them both or all, all three of those actually play um in in charleston but mm. i wanted to shout out baptiste actually because she did get a big win so she she beat alina gabriela Rus, who's the world number 55 um six three six love in the first first round um which again that's huge like that's mm-hmm. a big win for for baptiste um and it, again it shows you the, the kind of level she's at and the continued kind of growth that you know she she's kind of yeah just she keeps keeps elevating this year um and we just hope that continues um and yeah paulini and madison keys they also won their i think paulini won her first round match lost in the second round keys got a buy into the second round lost in the third mm-hmm. um so yeah a bit of a slow week in charleston obviously keys being a former champion and Sloan as well. Sloan in 2016, Keys 2019. Um, So yeah, Charleston wasn't really it for us. I think the final is Benchich and Jabor. Yeah, they were playing literally when we started recording. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's it's a set all. Oh, they're still playing. Yeah. Third set, um, Benchich won the first set, Jabor second. We'll see who wins after that. Interesting. So, don't care, but whatever. <laughs> I'm I say go, go to Jabor. <laughs> Jabor, the African. Um, Marrakesh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't try and claim because she's a uh, figgy. African. I mean, she's African, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. No, no, it's a way you just dropped it just like that. If you're like, yeah, yeah, the African. Like, you're trying to say, <laughs> what, the, African, the African blood is what is what put her through the final, yeah? I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Marrakesh, staying in Africa, the, the, the mm, one and only ATP Tour level event um, in Africa took place mm-hmm. uh, in Marrakesh, um, and Felix Ojeda seen was the top seed, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, he lost in the second round uh, in three sets to Alex Molkan, who eventually went on to reach the final, but he lost to David Goffin. Um, and yeah, I, I even said to you, like after Felix lost that match, like I was. Like, yeah, you were. You were heart. upset. <laughs> I took it to heart because, yeah, I just had high hopes. Be the tournament being in Africa, like Felix being the top seed, the field wasn't the strongest, 
Mm. So I just thought, yeah, he could probably yeah, bag yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to, to lose to uh, Malkin in the second round, it was disappointing. And I'm sure he, or I'm sure Felix was mm. disappointed as well. But what were you looking? Because I, I want to get your your point. Like, how do you think he's gonna do clay season? Because it's last a tricky year he one. didn't do he didn't do that yeah. great. It's a tricky one. Like, so he's never really done well at the French. I want to say he has he won a round. I think he's got to the second. I think his best results will be the second round. You know, at the French Open. Let me check. Kind of, so he does but, struggle. But as you, yeah, I'll check as you explain yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, Monte Carlo, which we'll come on to. He's the sixth seed, so. Mm. I think he'll play um, Massetti or Pear in, in the second round because he gets a bye into the second round. Mm. Like, both winnable matches, but he's lost to Massetti. I mean, he lost to Massetti last year in Barcelona, I want to say. Mm. Um, and he's also lost to Pear too, but that was, I think, 2019. But yeah, these are players he, he should, but he should be beating both of them really and truly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a tricky one, Lucy. Like, I, I, Felix has, I mean, we're big fans of this, obviously. Like, he's got the game to kind of do damage on all surfaces. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're right. Like, literally, he, his first French Open was 2020, out the first round. He was at the first round last year as well. Yeah, so yeah. So, um, um, compared to all the other ones, US Open semifinals, Wimbledon, yeah. quarterfinals, Australia Open, the quarterfinals, but then French Open's been first round, first round, first round. Yeah, that's so... the one he's going to crack, 100%. And hopefully it's this year. And, like, this year arguably has been his breakthrough year in terms of I mean, of the, last, the last 18 months, like, they've been great, to be exactly. honest. Exactly. But I'm saying this year particularly, obviously, winning winning his first ATP mm-hmm. Tour tournament. Maybe um, that's why he actually got a uh, thingy that um, Nadal's uncle, is it, in his team? Yeah, yeah, Tony. Uh, I think he probably realised he needed to step up his game. And I think that's why there was a little bit more pressure last year. I felt like that's why he was flopping last year because I felt like people just saw that. Yeah. And even yeah. the players, like even TF, remember literally even commenting and be like, bro, you're about to kick our ass on French Open now. Like, like, on clay teams. now. Yeah. yeah. So I think there was that, you know, people saw that. I was like, oh shit, like that's it. He's, he's solid because he was doing well in all the other services but clay. So... I'm hoping this time they're working a bit more closely together and trying to figure out where he's going wrong with Clay. Or yeah. maybe Clay is not his thing. Like, he's not the only player. Like, I don't, Lucy, I don't know, man. I, I disagree with that. Really? I think, I think he's got game for all surfaces. Yeah. I, I really do mm. believe that. So I, yeah. I think it's, I think it's only a matter of time. And I don't, I don't want to spend too much time like talking about Felix and like, you know, like it's a crisis because it's not a crisis. <laughs> I'm, I'm 21 years old. Like, True. He's improving like literally year on year. But, yeah, I think this year, hopefully, it's the one where it kind of clicks for him on on clay, um, and hopefully that does start in Monte Carlo. But before we move on to like what's coming up, uh, TFO. So Francis TFO, he reached the quarterfinals um, in Houston, um, played some really really nice stuff. Like I thought on on route mm. to that uh, quarterfinal, he lost to the annoying American. <sighs> My God. Exactly. I'm not even saying his name. It's hella oh, irritating. Even like, out, of, out, like, out of every, like, it's like, bro, it's like, okay, I don't mind you losing, bro. Losing to, against her, my God, it's like, it's just disrespectful. Like, it it's just so, no, irri- it's just, so it's irritating. irritating. And he um, made it to the finals, but he didn't win. I think. I think the finals yet to be played as we record. So it's him and, him and, uh, Rudd? Marnie Parker. Oh, why did I yeah. think it was Rudd? Hmm. Oh, no, no, Rude, um, he, he pulled out. Oh, he pulled out. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I think I was thinking. On, oh, it's on, against Opelka. Yeah. On Rude, though. So, Michael Moe, your bae from the, the Australian Open last year. <laughs> that's a guy. He, respectfully, he took, because he's in a relationship. Respectfully, respectfully. But yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's a nice, good point. Um, <laughs> he, took, he took advantage of his lucky loser spot. So, yeah, yeah like Rude pulling out allowed Moe to enter into the first or enter the draw. Um, and he got a nice win over Sam Query. Um, but then was, he had to pull out as well, isn't he? Exactly, it? yeah. So he pulled out against, it was Nick Kyrgios who was due to play in the quarterfinal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he, he pulled out and get a groin injury. So shouts out and hopefully, yeah, best of luck, like give his recovery and hopefully we see him again um, at some Very point. Very soon. 
<laughs> Indeed. But yeah, before you before we wrap up, Monte Carlo, that's the um event that we well, but finally actually should say <laughs> I'm so happy. We're in we're on European time now. No more US Hi. schedule. No, <laughs> the only the only disadvantage is obviously is 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 during um what's it called is during like working hours working hours but still yeah. it does not beat the fact that i have to watch a bloody match at midnight it's time to go <laughs> here. let's go let's kick it so yeah we're in we're in monte carlo um mm-hmm. for the uh yeah monte carlo masters gum on feast announced he's putting out unfortunately with a, a foot injury which is to very- be fair i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie when i saw his jaw i was pissed off like he's his first match was bloody thingy. Um, uh, Hubert, Hubert I, I was just like, what the yeah. fuck, man? Like, <laughs> yeah. that was, that was like, okay, 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 okay. And I was like, I was like it, it would have been a good match, though. Yeah, but for like definitely. first round, I'd just be like, oh, come on. Listen, this is, this is Master's level, man. This is what happens at Master's true, level. True, 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 like, true. So, but yeah, I, I, was, I was looking forward, but not looking forward to that match at the same time. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, her catch is he's in pretty good form or hot form at the moment. Yeah, he is, he is, he is. He's good. I like him. He's good. Yeah, I know I, I like him too. Good vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, Songa's in wild card, which is great. Mm-hmm. So he'll play Marin Chilich. That's a definitely yeah. like throwback, throwback match. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and their matches against each other are always good as well. So hopefully it's a good one. Forward. Exactly. Yeah. Um yeah. and then like I said, you've got Felix in there. He gets a buy into the second round, being the sixth seed. And then, yeah, we'll take on the winner of Lorenzo Massetti and the uh, Benoit Pair, um, which is that should be an entertaining one. Mm-hmm. Pair might beat Massetti, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's problematic. Uh... Like, if he just fuck around and stay floating with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Massetti, Massetti, Massetti is pretty. He's pretty good. Although he's late, talented. He's, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that would be a nice, I think that'd be a nice match to watch. Um, mm-hmm. Mikko Yimmer, he was in the qualifying draw. He lost, unfortunately, in, in the first round of Poly, so we won't be seeing Mikko Yimmer. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, that, that wraps up the show, Lucy. So, but wait, hold on. You didn't, you, uh, you forgot to mention who's back. <laughs> who's back? No backs. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I mean, come on, it's, so, it's a big thing. Like. You know what? Like, I've not really, yeah, yeah, fair play. See, he, look, he, look, 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 look how you forgot because it's forgettable. No, I don't say that. But, I'm joking, well, I'm joking. That's but, the word um, number one. It is, it is. <laughs> look, look how now he's, he's starting to play and he's quiet. He's not making noise. He learned his, his lesson from the open. He's sad. I even forgot that he. See, you even forgot that he was going <laughs> to No, you he know what? He completely point. forgot because he point. came back. Like literally, he's all sided like the G in lasagna, mate. He didn't say is this, anything. This, is this going to be his first event? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. I that's know. Oh, my bad. And the craziest thing, <laughs> and the craziest thing, we might get him playing against Carlos in the quarterfinals if they make it through. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that because a lot of people keep saying that Carlos and Nadal are the same, but bro, that is Novak's son right there. Mm. So you, you see that Spider-Man meme? <laughs> that's, gonna, that's literally, if they play against each other, that's going to be literally Novak and Carlos. Like, they are extremely similar for like from the serves, the way they move on the court. I don't see Nadal as much, but obviously we know why they say it. One of the reasons why. Yeah, and plus great. Carlos, they say he's a huge fan of, of Fingy, but he's not even realizing like, bro, those moves that you're doing, that's not, that is not Nadal. That is Novak right there. So looking forward to that, but... We'll see, we'll see how it is. Um, how do you think Novak would do as well in terms of like just good his... Good point. Because um, I can't see him doing well. Like, but then again, it's Novak Djokovic. Like, I don't know. what I'm saying. I actually think he's going to do pretty well. I don't... Maybe he might not win, but okay. I think he might actually... I like won't be last, surprised if he makes it far. Latter stages. Fair play. Like, as much as he has not played, he has a lot of frustration on him right now he's like i i need to put everybody back in their place to remember who the fuck like i am but um then again i don't know how he's been feeling since the whole craziness but yeah. i'm just saying just don't let i'm not doubting him yeah yeah I, I think, i'm yeah. not doubting him i don't think he's gonna go far in french open though a lot of people think he is i don't think he's gonna go far in french open because there'll be the yeah madrid 
before the French, and I think Barcelona as well. Yeah, but I don't. I think for his first slam with everything, I think he has. I think he's gonna bag. He has more chances of bagging Wimbledon than French Open. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I think this French Open for men, we might get a new winner. I don't think Nadal's actually gonna push it through. Fascinating. Well, we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Yeah, <laughs> we will. But Your that's what episode. you know. But no, I appreciate you, Lucy. You made it. You pushed through. I pushed through. Oh my gosh. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, we uh, thank you all for listening again and tuning in. Um, and yeah, join join the discussion, guys. By the way, if you have like any opinions, like you know, hashtag Blasphemy Global. Talk to us at us. Mention us. Blah blah blah. I know some of you actually been listening and been adding us, which has really been great. Yeah, love it. Um, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Get everybody to <laughs> tennis and. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for the support. It's been it's been dope. Indeed. And yeah, long may that continue. And like Lucy said, we appreciate it like every time. So just please continue to, to do that. Um and yeah, enjoy, enjoy the tennis until we, we meet again. <laughs> so yeah, take care, guys. <laughs>